Hello everyone, welcome to another one of my lead code videos. In this one, we'll do lead code 150, evaluate reverse Polish notation. So we're given a string array of tokens. These tokens are in the order of reverse Polish notation. And what that basically means is, you know, we'll be given like two numbers and an operand, right? So in this case, it's like two plus one, right? And then the result of that is like another operand and that is then used with the next number or expression and that has its own operand assigned to it, right? So in this case, it's like two plus one in brackets and then the result of that times three and you know, and then if there was like another number here, four and plus, so then it would be this whole thing plus four and so on, right? So what will be our approach to solve this problem? So we can evaluate this in two ways. Either we use a recursive solution or we use something like a stack. In case of a stack, what we'll do is basically, if we have, let's say, every time we see a number, we'll insert it in the stack. So let's say we see two, and then we see one, and then every time we see an operand, let's say plus, we'll remove these two numbers from the stack perform this operation, so then it would be like, so we remove one, we remove two, we perform the operation two plus one, three, and we put it back in the stack, right? And then the next thing is, again, we see a number, so we put it in the stack, and then we see an operand. So the operand says multiply, and so we'll again pop two items out of the stack, so it's now multiply, we pop out three and three, and then we do three times three, nine, and put it back in the stack. And so at the end, whatever is left in the stack, the one element is the result, right? So that will be our approach. Let's go ahead and write the code. So let's first create our stack of integers. Now we'll just create a loop on our tokens. Now that we've created a loop on our tokens, we're going to first check if it's an operator, right? So if it's like if it's plus or multiply or divide, we'll check for that. So we'll switch on the token that car at zero, right? And based on that, what we'll say is we'll create our different cases. So I've create here are different cases where if we have plus, multiply, divide, and then the default case, I didn't put negative as an explicit case because it will just go in the default and for minus, we need to consider two cases. One, if it's just an operator minus, or another, if it's actually a negative number, because in this case, if you see, the numbers can be from negative 200 to 200. So, you know, if we have like negative 11, the first car will be negative or minus, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a minus operator. So we'll handle that over here. So now in the case of plus, what we'll do is we'll we'll compute our sum, which will be stack.pop plus stack.pop, right? So we'll pop out the two elements and we'll add them and then we'll put that back in our stack, right? As we saw earlier. We'll do the same thing for our multiplication and instead of sum, it will be a product. And here we'll change this to multiply. And then in the case of divide, it's going to be the same, but we'll have to divide the second pop by the first pop. So we'll first store our numerator and our denominator. So our numerator will be stack.pop, but the first one will be the denominator. So it will be denominator is equal to stack.pop first, and then the numerator. And what we'll do is in the stack, we'll add a numerator over denominator. And for the default case, um, this, this can be either minus or a negative number. So how do we know if it's just minus? So if it's minus, our token dot length will be equal to one. So this means that it's a minus, right? So we'll do a similar thing as divide where we'll first capture our uh, right and then our left. And then what we'll do is left minus right. So it's the, the, the second pop minus the first pop. So that will be a case of subtraction. Otherwise, we know that it's neither one of these and it's neither a negative number. So therefore, 
what in this case we just push the number to the stack so we'll push integer dot parse int token back into the stack right and at the end once we're done with everything the one item remaining in our stack will be our answer so we'll return uh, stack dot pop so let's see how this does Okay, so here the token dot length one doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a minus. So we should still check if token dot car at zero is equal to negative, right? Because it could be it could be just a, 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 a positive number which has a length of one, right? And it's not one of these. So let's say if we had five, that would still have a length of one. So we should check if if it starts with a negative sign and the length is one, then we know it's a minus sign. Otherwise, we just push it into the stack as a number. All right, accepted, let's submit. Perfect, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, cheers.